Hello there, welcome to Crafting a Life with Fee. Okay, so this is week one of our 12 weeks of Christmas projects. This one's going to be a candle mat. You can also use it for a little doily on a side table or anything like that. Now it's going to feature some applique and some English paper piecing. Now if you were lucky enough to get one of our Christmas kits, um, you will have received this gorgeous pink linen. We're going to be using that for the front of our candle mat. Um, so you'll need to get, grab that out. You'll also need to download the template sheet. There'll be a link in the, in the uh, description box for this, but if you're in the Tilda Lovers group on Facebook, it'll also be in the file section. So what you'll have on your pattern sheet is a half circle, which is going to be used as our template for our little candle mat, and there's a little thing on there which tells you which side to put on the fold. We'll get to that later. You've also got a heart there, which that will be an applique heart done in felt. Um, you'll also have the felt in your Christmas kit. If not, you'll need to source yourself some. And then you also have the template there for the little pentagon. But if you've got the kit, you'll have got um, all your little papers will already be there and that will save you that step. But if not, um, either way, I'm also going to show you how to make a template. Now, in your kit, you will have also got some plastic. Um, but uh, any type of sort of you know clear plastic like this is good. Sometimes when you buy shirts and things, you'll get um, a piece of plastic in that. You can upcycle that to use. So what you need to do is you just need to get a sharpie of some description, something that will draw onto the plastic and will stay permanent. Uh, and you need to trace off the shape. Now you can use one of the little shapes as your template if you want. Um, but it's just as easy just to trace it off the sheet, just like this. Oops, now it's moved. So you can use something to tape it down if you want to. Um, and of course, if you are a seasoned EPP, you might even have an acrylic template of a one inch pentagon. So if you do, that's wonderful. Okay, so that's the shape there. So we'll pop the pattern sheet away just for the moment. Um, I'll pop a piece of fabric underneath this so that you can see. Uh, and then what I'm going to do here now is I am going to draw a one inch seam allowance around this pentagon. So I'm um, a quarter inch I should say. So I'm just using my ruler and I'm just drawing a quarter of an inch from the traced template and then that will give us a quarter inch seam. So it doesn't have to be neat and tidy as you can see there it can just be um, a bit scrappy looking and of course my scissors are not within arm's reach so so what we need to do is just to cut that out now and then that's going to give us a template. Now of course you don't have to make a template if you don't want a fussy cut. All you can do when you're cutting your fabric, and you can see here I've used some for another project, um, but you can just cut around your fabric and leave um, a seam allowance around it if you don't want a fussy cut. That's the simplest way. But I'm hoping I can fussy cut a few of these fabrics for my little candle mat. So I'm going to make a template. So all you need to do here now is just to cut on that quarter inch seam allowance mark and that will give you a little template. There we go. Okay, so now you need to grab your Fat Eighth Bundle. So we're using Maple Farm for this. If you're using one of your own fabrics, that's fine. You can choose whatever you want. Now there are a few fabrics in this range that are perfect for fussy cutting. Um, so what you need to do is to take your little window, your little template window, and start placing it on the fabric so that you can see whether or not something is going to be able to be fussy cut. And as you can see, this little circle here is perfect um, for fussy cutting, and that's what I'm going to do. So the range has, and let me just grab out the circle fabrics. So I think there are three. Yes, there are three. Is that right? Yep. Okay. So that's our three um, fabrics there that um, I'm choosing because they're perfect for fussy cutting. So what we need to do now is to decide which one is going to go best with our background fabric. Now this is a beautiful dusky pink. This was chosen because it melded so beautifully with Maple Farm. Um, and so as you can see, 
that one there is going to look stunning. They're all going to look stunning. It's just a matter of you know trying to decide which one is going to go. Now, of course, we're going to be using a bit of felt in the centre. And if you've bought the kit, you've got four pieces of felt. Now, these aren't an exact match to the fabrics. They're as close as we could get. Um, and, of course, the heart in the centre is going to be in felt. So we need to also think about what colour that is going to be when we decide um, on the fabric to use. So I'm thinking that this one will actually go best because the purple will match there um, and that will match on the background there beautifully. So I hope that you think that that matches too. Sometimes I can be a bit weird when it comes to colour. But anyway, so that's what we're going to do. So the process of fussy cutting is super, super easy. So we take our fat eighth. Now this, of course, has got our seam allowance on it, so we, it doesn't matter how close to the edge we go. And we need to decide um, where we're going to put the template for the first time. Now this first one is really important because it's going to be the template for the rest. And we need to take our Sharpie again and on our little uh, window here that we've made, now what you can see here at the bottom, the, the a pentagon is going to hit the next pattern down fractionally. That's okay, that's absolutely fine. I'm not too worried about that. But what I'm going to do, and I'm probably going to have to put my head over the camera, I'm sorry, but I'm going to trace the little flower in the centre. Now, if you've watched any of my other fussy cutting videos, this is so that when you are cutting all the rest of your flowers, um, and I'm just going to put a dot there because that's one of the dots, um, and then I'm just going to put a little mark in the corners here because that is where the edge of that flower is. And the reason we're doing all this is so that we can line it up with every other pentacon that we cut. So we'll cut this one first and then I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to use a, a marker. Now it's not going to matter what you use because you're marking the area outside the seam allowance, as you can see. Okay, now I will go ahead and cut that out. Ordinarily, I would trace all 10 off at the same time, but I want to show you in a moment. And these are paper scissors, so they're not going to cut very well, but anyway. And we'll just get this one cut out. This is just beautiful fabric. The thread count in this fabric is above anything else I have in my stash. You can just feel the quality, it's beautiful. Okay, so that's our first pentagon. Now when it comes time for us to put this pentagon, uh, our card on our pentagon, what we're gonna do, you can see, I'll just turn this back around. This is where we made our marks. Oops, so this is why we've got the circle, so that we can find where the top is. Uh, because you've got to remember that a pentagon is the same no matter which way you turn it. So you, that's why we've got that circle. There we go. That's the one there. So you can see I've got my circle lined up and I've got the edge of those flowers there lined up as well. Okay. So we're going to flip, flip it over. And then we're going to flip over our template as well. And you can see there... Yep, that's about where the card is. So we're going to pop our card on the inside there and then we're going to glue it down. Now I like to use a water-soluble glue pen when I'm doing my EPP shapes and I like to run my line of glue just um, away from the edge of the cardboard. Don't do it very thick. You want to be able to remove the papers later which I'm going to show you how to do. So you do two opposite sides first and then you fold over your bottom and then you can fold your sides. Okay, so then that is your, your little pentagon. So now we'll go on and we'll do another one exactly the same.
Okay, so it's just a matter of lining up that pattern again. So this dot here is very important for the lining up because you can find where the top of it is very easily. So you just get your all your marks lined up and then you can just simply trace around your template again and then you have your cutting line. So you need to do this 10 times, you need 10 of these um, to be the same. So you can see here again I'm going down to the next pattern repeat to find the next one and I've lined it up once again. And the fact that this fabric has a short pattern repeat, and what I mean by that is the pattern is repeated very close together. If you are ever fussy cutting and you're using a fabric that has a long repeat, um, which means that the pattern is repeated over a longer distance, I'll try and find one. Um, yeah, this might be a good example. So if you were going to fussy cut the birds, um, you can see here, if I was to line up my bird, maybe we'll just make out he was the flower. So then we have that pattern repeat there. But then to get the next pattern repeat, I've got to go down quite a lot further. Some of them are quite wide apart. You might only have four pattern repeats in that large piece of fabric. Um, luckily for us, most of this range has a very short pattern repeat. So you could choose, you know, you could have the bird fabric. You could choose any of them. Um, but so that you waste less uh, fabric, it's important that you get a pattern repeat, um, as I said, that is not too far apart. And you can see that this pattern repeat, I've got one drawn out here, and then this one is going to go right next door. So the wastage on the fabric is going to be minimal because of the pattern repeat, if you understand what I mean. I hope I haven't confused you with that. Um, but it is a very important denominator when it comes to fussy cutting. You can't really fall in love with a fabric for fussy cutting that's got, yeah, you know, too big a, um, a repeat because you'll just waste so much fabric. Okay, well, I'm going to go on and keep doing this. As I said, I need 10. I'm then going to glue them all down and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next stage. Okay, so this is how much fabric I've got left from the fat eighth. So it didn't even use half. Um, so it's only used about a fat sixteenth with a little bit left over. So that's really good value for this project. Okay, so this is what you will have. You will have all of the pentagons, and this is how they're going to be sewn together. Um, and you can see that, you know, actually fussy cutting them gives you a beautiful um, look and a beautiful pattern. So we're going to take two of these, and we are going to flip them over so that they are a matching pair. Um, and we will sew them together. But for that, I'm going to use a different camera. Okay, we'll see how this works. Normally, I'd use an overhead camera, and I seem to do it off camera every single time. So... Just using a small amount um, and see how we go. So we're using um, some thread. I use the bottom line thread, which is um, perfect for EPP because it sinks into the fabric. Um, I've got a double, a double piece of it with a knot in the end on a little needle. And as I said, we're going to pick up two pieces and we're going to remember which way they're going to join. So we're just going to join them here on this seam. And so we're just going to fold it over make sure that those seams are matched up. Now to start off with, of course I've dropped my needle, to start off with we are going to hide our knot up underneath. So we're going to go in underneath our fold of our fabric and then the knot will get hidden. And then we are going to just whip stitch. So if I can try and get this up to the camera here. So all we're doing is we're just going to go backwards and forwards through our fabric. Now the fabric is, sorry, the needle has gone through the fabric right um, on the outside of that cardboard. We're not going to sew through the cardboard. We are sewing on the edge there, if you can feel it. I've got a doggy crying at the door. He wants to come and help. So you can actually feel where the cardboard is. With your needle so you're not going to go through that cardboard as I said you're going to go just onto the fabric. Now I often do a little figure eight knot halfway along so if it comes unraveled it's only going to unravel that far. Uh, I've shown how to do these before but I will show you again in a moment. 
um, but I just want to put that knot in so I can turn it to the other side and show you there how it looks when it's sewn together. So you can't really see your stitches too much, but it doesn't matter if, if you do. It truly doesn't matter. Um, the longer that you go with this sort of thing, you know, the neater you'll get. So it's all about practice. So EPP is not scary. I know a lot of people are very frightened of it. And I know that I've taken you out of your comfort zone a few times with projects with EPP. Um, but I'm doing it on purpose because I want you to learn some new skills. And it is a great um, relaxing thing to do. And it's a great thing to do with scraps. Great for fussy cutting. You know, just lots and lots of different things you can do with EPP. And as we go along you will learn lots of different techniques um, and we also have an EPP club as you know which can be seen over at kittyrosecottage.com. Okay I'm at the end. So what we're going to do now I'm going to do that figure eight knot again. So you can see that I've got my needle poking through. I take my thread and I wrap it around the needle that way. Hold it. Then I take the thread from the back of the needle and wrap it around that way. That is our figure eight. And you can see there, can you see the figure eight? And as I pull it, it tightens itself off. Now when I finish off, I like to do two of those. That way I know it's not going to come unraveled. And then all we need to do then is to snip off our thread. And then we have our two beautiful pentagons sewn together. And you can see that the seams match beautifully on the edges there. And so then we're going to go along and we're going to get our next one and then we're going to stitch that down. And you need to continue to do that until they're all in a complete ring and then we'll come back to the next stage. Okay, so now you should end up with something that looks like this. So it's a ring um, and we're just going to set that aside for the moment. Now we're going to cut the half circle out of our cardboard to make a template and then we're going to take our dusty pink linen and we're just going to be very uh, frugal here when we're cutting it and we are just going to make sure we're not going to waste any. So I think that's, we'll just go up a fraction more because we're going to be using this for other projects as well. Okay, that's about right, like that. So what you can do now is grab your marking pen, I'm using a friction pen, and then you can just simply draw around your template. Oops. And then cut out your circle. Now you need to do the same thing with the Parlan, um, which is a fusible wadding. And you also need to choose a backing fabric. Now, because I've got heaps of this one left, I'm actually going to be using this for the back as well. So same thing, try and be frugal. Try and just get your fabric folded so that you have no wastage. So around about there we'll do it. And I'll slide it right up because I'll be able to get a little bit of EPP out of that. Um, and as you all know, I'm currently doing an EPP quilt and all the little scraps I can find are much appreciated. Oops. I'm not having much luck here. So there we go. So I'll go and cut these out um, and then we'll go to the ironing board with this circle and this circle and I'll show you how to take the papers out. It just occurred to me that you might not know how to cut on the fold, so let me show you. I think that's probably the best idea here. So I'm just going to cut the linen off so that we've got our semicircle there. And so then we have our fold. So all we simply do is just to follow that semicircle shape around with the scissors that you've traced off your template. And then when you open it out, you have a perfect circle. And you'll have the same with your parlan, you'll have the same with your backing. Um, so you'll have your three circles. 
Okay, so now we have all of our little bits here on the ironing table. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is to give this linen a bit of stability. So we'll iron it first because I've got a few uh, folds in mine. I'm just leaning across to grab my spray starch just to give it a bit of a bit of dampness because um, sometimes it can be hard to get the folds out of linen. Now, for those that don't use a spray starch, you can purchase it from the supermarket in the uh, washing detergent aisle. You'll find they're called spray starch. Or if you want a proper quilting spray, you can buy Best Press, which is a starch and sizing alternative. It's um, I really like it. It's really good. And you can see that it's taken out all of those creases there in my linen. Okay, so I'm just going to lay the parlan down on the wrong side. Now, to be honest, it is quite difficult to find the right and the wrong side of the linen. So it probably doesn't matter which side you're going to lay it on. There we go. And you can see that my cutting out's been a bit higgledy-piggledy, but that's fine. We can trim that up later. So that's okay, and I will just give the back a bit of a press as well, and then we'll just pop those off to the side. Okay, so this is our our ring of pentagons. So we're just going to give it a nice press, and that's just going to set your sewing seams. It's also, um, I'm using steam, so it's going to start to steam up some of that glue, because it's a water-soluble glue that I've used, and the bit of steam and heat sort of helps to dissipate that glue so it's not as hard to get up. So we'll iron it on both sides. Now this obviously sets the fabric into the beautiful points and everything that you've got, um, but it also, as I said, helps to remove that glue. So you can start somewhere, decide where you're going to start, and you start lifting up your glue. Now, if you've taken my advice at the start and haven't used a whole heap of glue, you will find that it will lift up really well. Now you can see there that I have lifted all of the corners um, off the glue. So now I'm going to re-iron it with a bit of heat. Um, I'll just wait till that cools down. So then I go to an opposite side and I work on the opposite section there. Okay. And same thing apply that bit of heat again. Now go back to the one that you did to begin with and then you can just simply slide that paper out and you've kept your shape. That's the one there and you've kept your beautiful shape. Then just give it another little press and you can see that that paper is completely unharmed um, and I can reuse that. It's completely reusable. So there we have it. So the one that's opposite this is the one that we pulled out the second time. There we go, same thing, completely unharmed. And then we just continue doing that. We just continue going around and taking out all of the Pentagon's papers and then what you will be left with is a beautiful fabric shape. So I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so all of the papers are removed you can see there we have all of our beautiful folds because we've used a hot iron and we've, you know, taken all the papers out and it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So there's nothing to be frightened about when it comes to taking out papers. Okay, so we're going to take our piece of pink linen, which has got the parlan on the back there. And now we are going to attach this ring to the linen. So we can do that in a number of ways. We can use our Roxanne's glue basted, which I'm definitely going to use. And I like to use that on the points. Um, this one that I'm using is the dip and dab. It just gives you that tiny bit of hold. You don't want a lot. This is a water soluble glue. It's not gonna make your fabric hard and manky. It's, um, it's actually made to go onto fabric. And then I just like to put a little dab just in there as well. And it's just going to give it that nice hold. Okay, so we're just going to pop it up. Now we've got to make sure that we're going to be centering it. 
um, and that looks about right to me. Okay, and then you can use some applique pins or normal pins, but applique pins are good because they're not very thick and they're not very long, so they won't damage your fabric. And I generally just would, you know, put one in each of these points just to hold it in the right spot. You've got that Roxanne's on there as well. Now, if you're worried about finding the center of the circle, you can fold it in half um, both ways and find the center point if that's concerning you. But you should just be really be able to eyeball it. You can hear my iron gurgling away over there. I forgot to turn it off. It's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to blind stitch it down. Uh, I think I will put a pin down through the bottom through there. Anyway, I'll go and put the other camera on and um, I'll show you how to blind stitch it. Okay, it's all pinned down onto there now. It does look a little bit uh, like it's uh, a bit ruched there, but it's okay. It's just where I've got the pins, so don't worry about that. Now, I've got a single strand of the bottom line thread, which is the one that I like to use. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start stitching it down. Now, let me just show you what we do. So we're just going to have our needle come up Hopefully you can see that there, right on the edge of the fabric where it comes, um, where it actually meets on the linen there. And then we're going to pop it down into the linen and then we're going to come back up a little bit forward. Can you see there? I've come up a little bit forward and caught the fabric once again just a teeny tiny bit. Okay, then I've come out. So then I'm going to go down almost directly below through the linen where I've come out on the side of the pentagon. And then I'm going to go forward of it again so that all of my big stitches are on the back of the fabric. And what is on the front is just the area that you're coming out on the, on the pentagon. And then you're going down right next to that into the linen. So, can you see there where it's come out? I'll just hopefully hold the thread up and you should be able to see. See, that's come out of the side of the pentagon there, just slightly. And then when I'm going back down into the linen, I'm going down directly where it comes out, but I'm going down through the linen part. And then I'm coming back up forward of it a little way. So that sort of distance there. And that big stitch will be on the back. And you won't you won't see it from the front so all you're seeing from the front and don't pull it too tight you don't want to you don't want to ruffle it all you're seeing at the front is the tiny little area there right on the edge of the pentagon where you're coming out and then you'll see where you go back down into the linen now when you get to sections when you get to sections like this here and you can see that the fold of my pentagon is poking out all you simply do when you get to that is get a sharp pair of scissors or something like that and then just poke it back in so that you don't see it. So back down and back up and you'll see that it's just going to be invisible and that's what you call blind stitching. So you can see that there, that's all stitched down but you can't actually see where I've stitched it. Now when you get to this point, um, it's the same sort of process. You just come right out at the point there. So your needle comes out at the point of your pentagon. And then you, I've got a bit of a loose thread there, so make sure that you get rid of that. Then you go straight down through the linen at that point and then come out forward of it again, right on the edge of the pentagon there. And then you need to do that all the way around the outside and then you need to do it all the way around the inside as well. And then you can remove your pins 
and then your pentagons um, are stitched down. Now this is the same process that you use when you're, when you're stitching hexagons or any EPP shape down to a background. You're doing like a applique stitch, so it's a stitch um, that you would use if you were doing needle turn applique. It's the same sort of stitch. But as I said, if you can see there, well hopefully you can't see, but you shouldn't be able to see, I've got my scissors sitting on my thread, you shouldn't be able to see my stitches there which you can't so and that's that's how you do it so so simple so i'll go off and finish mine and we'll come back and finish the last few stages of this gorgeous candle mat so there we go it's all stitched down now so stitch down all the way around both edges um and it looks great so what we're going to do next is we are going to fold it in half and then we're going to fold it in half again and we're doing that to find the central point and this is the central point here so just take a marker and then just mark a little X in the center like that it doesn't have to be perfect just mark a little X so that you've got around about where the center is turn it back the right way and then we're going to put our bottom circle on top and then we're going to pin it all together and then we're going to sew all the way around with a quarter inch seam so don't worry about leaving a gap for turning because we're actually going to cut that cross that we just made here we're actually going to cut that and that is going to be our turning point on the front so we'll just pin and then I'll take this off to the sewing machine and I'll do my nice quarter inch seam all the way around and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to cut your cross. Okay, so it's all sewn around and you can see there, that's how it looks on that side. Now I've started to peel away some of the parland from in the seam allowance there. You can either leave it in or you can cut it away. It's entirely up to you. Um, it'll just give you a nice and neater finish if you start to pull some of that away from the edges, but it really doesn't matter. Now what I want you to do is I want you to pull this apart so that you've just got the front part um, in your hand and then fold it where you've got your marks there and then just give it a little snip with your scissors they're not very sharp are they we'll use my good little scissors there and then you're going to cross cut so that you've actually got a cross there now you don't want it huge um, but you don't want it too small that you can't turn through that hole. So you just need to be a little bit gentle with the um, parlan side. Now of course you can make this without the parlan, but it doesn't sit as nice. Um, that's what I find anyway, so I just prefer to use the parlan and just be a little bit patient when it comes to ironing it out at the end and, and sort of getting that nice finish. And you can see that that's pulling through the hole okay. I don't need any special turning tools. I will need to use something to smooth out the edges in a moment. But because I've snipped all of the curves, they are going to lay okay. So, here we go. I'm kneading my carpal tunnel done in my left hand. I don't know if you've noticed in some of my videos, but the strength I have in that hand is just not there. Anyway, all good, it's out. So there we go. So then you can take something like a uh, chopstick or something and I'll just use the end of the scissors and just be careful with them. But you're just going to press out all of those corners there like that. Then you're gonna take it over to the ironing board and you're gonna give it a nice press so that you've got your circle happening. There we go, it's all pressed now and you've got these beautiful, lovely edges and you've got your cross in the middle that you've now ironed um, closed, sort of. So we're going to top sew all the way around the top and just give it that nice, neat finish. And then the other thing that we're going to do is to do our heart from the template sheet, but we'll come back and do that in a sec. Okay, there we have it. So we've stitched all the way around the edge um, and given it that lovely seam. 
we just pop that off to one side. So we're going to take our pattern sheet and we're going to take a piece of fusible applique paper. Um, and if you purchase the kit from Kitty Rose Cottage, you'll have some of that in there. So you need to, on the paper side of that applique paper, you need to trace your heart. So use a pencil. Don't use your friction pen because when you apply the heat, your image will disappear. So you just need to use something that's not going to disappear with heat. So usually a pencil or a pen, something like that. So then you need to cut it out roughly, so leaving a bit of a seam allowance around it, just so that we don't waste too much of the felt. Then this rough side, or you can sort of feel a, um, a film on that, you're going to take it over to the ironing board and you're going to iron it to your felt. And there we go, that's now fused to the felt. So then we'll take a pair of scissors and we'll cut it out right on that trace line. Now when you're cutting out felt, it's important that you do nice, clean, continuous cuts. And by that I mean don't stop and start. Um, with your cutting because you'll end up with jagged edges. So just keep going with your scissors so that the scissor blade is in the same spot the whole way around. And then you'll get a nice clean finish. That'll look like that. Okay, so all that's left to do now is to take the back off and I'll just tear it. You can see there I've just torn it and you'll just tear off the paper and you'll be left with this shiny film. Can you see the shiny on that? That is the glue. And that'll turn your little heart into an applique now. And we're going to applique that directly over um, our cut in the middle of our mat. So you just fuse that down with a hot iron and you can see that that has now got a permanent fuse on it and it's not going to be going anywhere. Um, so you can stitch around that, you can stitch around it on the machine if you want to, you can stitch around it um, with a blanket stitch by hand, or you can stitch around it with a chain stitch in a coordinating thread. That part I'll leave up to you, you can decide what you want to do with it. Um, but there you go, that's our beautiful candle mat, and as you can see it's, it's a beautiful little uh, project which is very much uh, useful and it would make a beautiful gift this Christmas. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial um, and I hope that you give this one a go. If you do, you know what to do. Take a photo, uh, upload it into the group and I can't wait to see what you come up with. I will see you next time. Bye for now.